Hello, and welcome to the Z Hut. I'm Jay, and today we're going to take a look at the IIT Auto Darkening Welding Helmet. Now, a couple months back, I picked up, um, you can see this welder I got here. It was used, but barely used. I don't even think they ran one of the small two pound spools of wire through it. Not even. They maybe used it once or twice. I mean, this thing is nice. But um, last week I got some wire for it, finally, um, and I was going to be ordering a helmet next month, but something came up. I need to actually, today's Thursday, on Saturday, I'm going to be needing to do some welding. Um, if you watch my other, or you watch the videos on my channel, I just started doing some SDR radio videos. And I need, uh, I got a little problem with my test tower. I got to do some welding on it so I can keep doing those videos. And there's a couple other things around here that need to be welded, need to be done. So instead of ordering it, which I would have gotten it $15 cheaper, and it would have been comparatively the same thing, I just went to my local unclaimed freight, which is about a 15 minute drive from here. I'm out in the country. And it was uh, just a little over $45. Online, they were about $35. So $10 difference. Don't have to wait for it to be shipped. I have not opened this yet. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to open this up. We're going to take a look at it. Um, then I'm going to test it out. Um, unfortunately, I can't run the camera when I'm welding. I've seen other people do it, but I don't want to risk risk um, messing up the, the sensor in my camera. Uh, paid too much money for it for that. But All right, so what we'll do is we'll open up, take a look at it, see what comes in there. Now, before I open it up, one thing I did not like. I don't know if you can hear that shaking. The batteries, now this is solar. So when you're welding, it recharges the batteries. They don't have the batteries installed. They're not clipped in anything. They're not even wrapped together. They're just two of them loose, rattling around in there. Now that I'm not too impressed with. So there is a minus to this, but I don't know. They might redeem themselves. We'll open it up. Uh, if you watched, I did a video not too long ago on the, um, the IIT um, the cutoff wheels and the saw blades for Dremel tools. That's the first time I ever bought anything IIT that I actually gave a really good thumbs up. But I'm assuming that the lens and stuff in here, the ones I buy on eBay or Amazon, probably made in the same factory. So what the heck. I don't do a whole lot of welding. So I didn't want to go down to the Miller store and pay $250, $300. All right, let's get this opened up. Yeah, as you can see, the difficulty I'm having opening it, I have not opened this. I mm, got this about four hours ago. Came home, had to do some other things first. Now we're doing the video. There we go. Got her opened up. All right. Let's see here. First, we have an instruction sheet. Amazingly, it's in English. That's a plus. So they're starting to redeem themselves. I've gotten stuff before at Harbor Freight, Unclaimed Freight, um, Northern Tool, and you open up the instructions, and I don't even know what language they're in. All right, we'll take a look at that in a little bit. So there's two batteries in here. Uh, Ikea of Sweden, AB. And there's triple A, and then there's a whole bunch of Japanese, Chinese symbols. I don't know. I'm assuming these are rechargeable. Because, well, this has a solar panel on the front, and it's supposed to recharge itself. So, all right, so we got the helmet, we got the batteries, that one-page instruction sheet. 
I don't see anything else except the um, junk that's on the packages. Oh, also IIT stands for Illinois Industrial Tool, but um, right below it, it says it's made in China. So it's made in China, shipped over here. They put their label on it, IIT. All right, I'm going to go ahead and set this off to the side. Now, pull my hat off here. And... Now, um, I used to run a machine shop, and I had one heck of a Miller welder. Um, there wasn't much better you could get at the time. Pretty much the bigger models were commercial or... Um, they had an, a generator built in them and went in the back of the vehicle. They were the welder I had was like that long and stood like that tall. It had two tanks, two guns, did aluminum, everything. But uh, I had one of these auto darkening helmets, and I remember back in the day when I first started welding. I mean, I'm in my 40s. I remember the old stick welder, and that's what we had back then. And all right. Now, one thing that's got me confused is the adjuster is on the front. Well, yeah, okay. Because you got the helmet up when you adjust it, but you could normally they have them in the back. All right. I guess I won't take any points off for that. Um, the padding is cheesy. I will probably add some of my own, but... Let's see how comfortably. Well, it all right. All right. Well, I'm turning the the tighteners on the side, and well, that one tightens up a little. This one just Goals and clicks. Yeah, not too impressed. I don't know, not too impressed. Yeah, when I bend down, the helmet's trying to go forward. So if I was trying to weld downwards, I'd have to hold one hand on there. Hmm. That is a, uh, a negative to IIT. I'm going to have to give them a, a negative on that one. Um, not a real problem. I can fix that. Like I said, I used to run a machine shop. So replacing this instead of plastic that you go to tighten it up and it just goes click, pops the, uh, the threads. I, I can fix that. I got some stuff that's actually made out of metal. So... No super big deal, but you're paying the money for it. I mean, it should work out of the box. All right. Now, there is a little battery door in here. I just pulled it off. Um, I don't know. <sighs> well, beans, the camera lights are back there. You probably can't see, but there's a little... Uh, little door right here that came off and that's where the batteries go well, let's see it shows the negative and generally negative is the flat side goes that way so put that in all right it does take both these look like to me are the same batteries if you have those wow the spring tightness in there is junk now, it is tight enough at contacts, but it would have been nicer if it was a little tighter. That's well, that's one of the things. I'm not a big fan of IIT. All right, I got the batteries in. I noticed it did flicker a little bit. The screen tried to darken a little and then didn't when I put it in. Right, it says low battery. That's probably because they're not charged. What I'll probably do is after this video is over. Or actually, no, i got to try it out. What I'll probably do is I'll set it outside in the sun for a half hour or so, and then I'll test it and 
because I'm going to do a full review and test on this. If this thing turns out to be 100% junk, I'm going to tell you it's 100% junk, and I got the receipt. I'll bring it back to Unclaimed Freight and say, hey, this is junk. Give me my money back. All right, well, there's an on, and on button in here, so I'm imagining if it's not used for an uh, extended period of time, it turns itself off. There's also a little dial in here that goes from the number 9 to the number 13, which is your, your darkness scale for your lenses. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the old flip-down helmets that you had to flip down and flip back up, not to auto-darkening. They had different lens numbers. Now, for MIG welding here um, with the, the flex core wire, the, uh, the 13 you're probably going to want to use. All right, then, uh, yeah, this goes 9 to 13. Then there's a little sticker in here, remove this before use. It's just a protective coating sticker. I'm surprised there's not one out here, and I'm also surprised there's not a replaceable lens out here. Um, because when you're welding, if you're down close, you get splatter, and it leaves little burn marks. So it is nice to be able to replace that and... Well, there's another negative. I don't know. Not super impressed. I mean, like I said, I was in a bind and I needed it. And I needed it. I couldn't order it and wait for it to come. But um, I guess the main thing is going to be, does it actually work when I use it? I can fix this other stuff. I can actually even make my own little lens thing to go on there that might be another video but yeah so far um on a scale of one to ten um i don't know maybe a four kind of close to a five um if i try it out and it works really good the lens and the darkening works i gotta fix a little stuff I might go, you know, six, maybe seven. Yeah, probably six. I don't know if I'd give this a seven. I mean, don't know. It's kind of cheap, but yeah, it's just plastic. You know, like I said, for $10 less, I could have ordered one online, but IIT, yeah, don't always recommend them, but hey, when you're in a bind, and maybe, maybe you only use you got you know even cheaper welder than this like a harbor freight welder um those are like a little over a hundred dollars um they don't do as much as this this is actually a dc welder uh the harbor freight one if i remember right is an ac you're kind of limited to what you can do it's the wire and the ac you can usually only do one pass beans this is dc and i got the proper wire i can do multiple passes with it that's something to check into if you don't know about that on welders. And also remember, if you're using flux car, not gas, reverse your polarities. Makes a difference. All right, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go set this outside. It is actually bright and sunny outside. I'm going to set it out there. Let it sit for about a half hour, 45 minutes. Let it charge up a little bit. If it still isn't fully charged by then, I'll probably just pop some alkalines in here so I can just try it out to finish this video up. And then I'll come back and um, I'll let you know what I think about how it actually works. The auto darkening and stuff. So, all right. I will catch you back. Well, for me, it'll be close to an hour for you. Hmm. A matter of two seconds. All right, um, I put the helmet outside for about a half hour, brought it in, um, set the welder up, got it plugged in, tried it, um, I had to mess with the darkness thing. The 13 seemed way darker than the 13 should have been. Uh, I put it on the lowest setting and I could just barely, well, little more in bear. I could see good enough to weld, but I, nah, there's another 
negative to this helmet. Um, I was in a bind. I am not planning on doing lots of welding. I'm a little setting what it is. I don't think I'm going to bring it back. It will work. I I only expect to use this thing, you know, a few times a year. It's just nice to have if you need to weld something. And if you're in a bind and you need a helmet and your local unclaimed freight has the IIT auto darkening helmet, buy it. If you can wait four or five days to have one shipped to you, that's going to be like 10 to $15 cheaper. I don't know. It's probably going to be fairly similar construction. I mean, it's all Chinese-made stuff. Uh, honestly, if you're going to be doing a lot of welding, just spend the uh, $99 or whatever it is and get a real one. And uh, when I had my machine shop, mine worked great. And I think I paid, and it was like 80 some dollars for it. And it used a little coin button battery that you replaced about once a year. And I used the heck out of it. It wasn't solar, but these have gotten cheaper recently. So, scale of 1 to 10. No, I'm not even going to give it a 6. I'm going to give this a 5. This is a not very good. But I'm going to give it a 5 because it does work. It's not that expensive. I'm going to have to do some modifications that will make it work. Like I said, these adjusters, every time I tried to use it, you had to actually hold it up with your hand. You could not adjust these to where it would stay up. And the helmet I had back when I had my machine shop, you could put it up and it would stay up. And then you'd have to pull it down. This one, you put it, you see, and they're tightened all the way and it just goes click and the thread strip. I will fix that. Actually, I have a hard hat around here, a real nice hard hat, and I don't need it no more. I think what I'll do is take the head assembly out of that and put it in here. I think that's what I'll do. That'd actually uh, be a good idea, solve that entire problem. All right, with that, well... I don't strongly recommend it. You're in a bind, yeah. Out of 1 to 10, I'm giving it a 5, and that's being nice. Um, actually, the welding gloves I bought up there on Claim Freight, and those, I give a 10 out of 10, but they charged me $7. They had some cheaper ones, but they didn't quite fit me. These ones were like $2 more, and that was because they have Harley Davidson tags on them, but hey. They fit me. Whatever. I needed them. A pair of welding gloves like this last years. Years upon years for the welding I do. Especially I. Um, one thing you want to do is you don't just leave these elements. Put them in a Ziploc bag. Don't just let them sit out. Put them in a Ziploc bag. Otherwise they're going to start molding because of the moisture and stuff. Um. Be careful with them. They'll last forever. Otherwise, you just throw them out in the garage. You'll get two, three years out of them. But, and yeah, they were only like seven something. So, all right, with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. Thanks for joining us here today at the Z Hut. Hope you found this information useful. And, well, like I said, don't buy this unless you absolutely have to. So, um, well, I hope you have a great day. And, well, have fun welding. Hope to see you here again.